earth. A world of water. Nearly three quarters of its surface lies beneath a blue patchwork of seas and oceans. For us, an alien realm, we've barely begun to explore. Extraordinary life forms live within these depths, each shaped by a world of immense variety and extremes. Like the continents they encircle, our oceans are filled with stories to tell, secrets to uncover, and characters to meet. This is a journey into their beautiful but fragile world, where the struggle to survive produces enchanting elegance. Taking teamwork and spellbinding encounters that reveal the magic of the Big Blue. Asia, the world's largest continent. In its southeastern corner, this vast landmass dissolves into swathes of island chains that have been thrust above the waves by the violent contortions of one of the most volcanically active regions on Earth. The slopes of these mountainous peaks attract some of the ocean's most elusive inhabitants. Those that don't quite touch the surface become crowned with coral reefs that explode with life. Here, Mother Nature's workshop has produced some of her most inventive designs. This is a realm of the bizarre looking, ingeniously adapted and beautifully ugly. Secrets lie hidden around every corner in a world which can be brutally unforgiving. Where fortune does not always favor the bold. And the first rule of survival is to know that what meets the eye is rarely as it seems. Close to the western boundary of the Pacific Ocean lie the Philippines. More than 7,000 islands, forged by volcanic eruptions from an area of the Pacific that forms part of the legendary Ring of Fire. But the virgin land that's created does not stay barren for long. Where patches of newly created seabed come within reach of surface sunlight, coral reefs can colonize and the seascape is transformed. The creatures that have made this colorful world their home are so diverse that scientists believe that many of the species that live here are yet to be identified. Life on an island chain that still contains many active volcanoes is a double-edged sword for the Filipino people. In 1991, an eruption close to the capital city, Manila, claimed hundreds of lives and destroyed 100,000 homes. But with a total coastline twice that of the United States, the Philippines is Asia's beach capital and a paradise for anyone with a serious love of the sea. The islands welcome divers from around the world who are keen to explore some of their 40,000 square kilometers of coral reefs. Below the waves, seagrass meadows stabilize the sandy seafloor and capture the sun's energy, providing food and security for the creatures that live between their leaves. The meadows give way to clumps of coral that look like living paint boxes. 
but vibrant colors are just one of the many highly specialized adaptations that have been developed by the reef's inhabitants to aid their survival. Many have very specific needs that can be found only in certain corners of the reef. Worldwide, there are more than 1,000 species of anemone, but only 10 of these host the planet's 30 or so species of clownfish. The anemone's tentacles are loaded with millions of tiny, poison-laden harpoons that fire on contact to protect against predators and snare small fish and planktonic prey. But the clownfish's mucus overcoat allows them to be recognized as friend rather than foe and find sanctuary inside the Medusa-like arms. Others prefer to hide in plain sight. Ghost pipefishes, whose upside-down impersonation of a piece of seaweed helps them to be overlooked while they keep an eye out for tiny crustaceans to ambush. Even fish as large as the harlequin sweetlips have their predators. And few on the reef can afford to stray far from defensive cover, even if it's just a gap between corals to dive into. Juvenile striped eel catfish like to stay within a fin's length of each other until they're not quite such an easy mouthful. Fusilier fish also work together to improve their individual chances of survival. The shoal's many eyes help to spot danger in time to take evasive action. But being highly adapted doesn't mean you cannot also be resourceful and take advantage of opportunities that might tip the odds of survival further in your favor. Man-made structures, such as the cathedral-like columns of a wooden pier, provide shelter from the dangers of the open ocean. Dark corners are useful for secretive creatures to hide away in. As the pier is slowly colonized, the structure comes alive. Every centimeter of living space is hotly contested. And the pillars are slowly converted into colorful totem poles of coral, sponges, and algae. These vertical reefs are also a refuge for a true freak of nature. With a monkey's tail, a horse-like head, and swiveling chameleon-style eyes, the tiger-tailed seahorse is a fish that looks more like a collection of spare parts borrowed from all corners of the animal kingdom. Small fins can beat at up to 50 times per second. But seahorses are not the strongest swimmers, and instead, they use their prehensile tails to hold anchor in the current. Without a stomach to store food, they graze almost constantly on tiny crustaceans. 
Seahorses are also the only creature in the animal kingdom where the male, rather than the female, becomes pregnant. These unusual adaptations have seen seahorses survive for more than 20 million years. But there are other creatures in these waters that challenge even the seahorse for the title of nature's strangest creation. In the waters that surround Apo Island lie one of the Philippines' most prized possessions. A coral reef that covers more than 30 square kilometers of seafloor, making it among the largest continuous reef systems in the world. Plenty of space for a sea snake to prowl for unwary fish which it paralyzes using some of the most potent venom on the planet. Sea snakes are thought to have evolved from land snakes and have air-breathing lungs rather than gills. Their tails have become flattened to aid swimming and their nostrils can be held closed as they dive to depths of 100 meters and stay submerged for up to two hours at a time. This colorful underwater garden holds around half of the world's species of coral. Those that produce a hard limestone skeleton are known as reef builders. And each species produces a different shaped colony, which further adapts to the local surroundings. The strength of the current, wave action, and depth are all factors that mold the corals and determine what shape will be the perfect fit. Sometimes a flattened plate shape works best, elsewhere a mushroom-shaped mound. Corals of the same species may end up appearing as though they're completely unrelated. The intricate whirls and folds increase their surface area and therefore the number of tiny coral polyps that can be supported by the structure. A brain coral is just one of the many ingenious designs. Corals may cover up to 85% of the available space on the reef and compete with one another for both space and light. In an environment where space is at a premium, the ability to be mobile can be an advantage. Feather sea stars may look like sedentary plants. But they use their plume-like arms to glide through the currents where they feed on tiny creatures in the water column. When resting, their arms curl over, making corners of the reef look like a prize-winning flower bed. Straining the currents for tiny planktonic prey is an adaptation shared by many of the reef's inhabitants. But one coral is thought to have dispensed with the need to capture live prey altogether. The hypnotic pulsing of the pom-pom coral's tentacles instead draws water across its surface to help with respiration and the absorption of essential nutrients. This corner of the reef may appear peaceful, but it also contains its fair share of active and deadly hunters. A cuttlefish uses millions of specialized pigment-containing skin cells, known as chromatophores, to blend in. Its true colors are only revealed when a victim is too close to escape. This master of disguise can change color in a few thousandths of a second, which confuses both their predators and prey. Or can also be used to send messages of aggression towards rivals and to romance potential mates.
Not all of the Philippines' underwater treasures are associated with coral reefs. Close to Malapascua Island, a sea mound rises to within 20 meters of the surface, where the strong currents of the Philippine Sea prevent colonizing organisms from taking hold. But the sea mound is still a magnet for life. The world's oceans are thought to contain more than 100,000 such sea mounts. By deflecting the ocean's deep, nutrient-laden currents towards the surface, they become productive areas full of marine life. And homing beacons for many creatures of the open ocean, who use them as signposts and stopping off points. This is the only place on the planet where an encounter with one of the world's most secretive sharks is almost guaranteed. Thresher sharks are unmistakable thanks to their scythe-like tail, which may be half the total length of the shark and a third of its weight. When the shark is hunting, the tail can be used as a powerful whip to round up and, if necessary, stun small fish, which the shark then eats at its leisure. The sharks come here along with other large marine creatures to be cleaned by specialized fish that pick parasites from their skin and clean their gills and mouth. Across all the world's oceans, Thresher shark populations have been drastically reduced by overfishing for their meat and fins. It remains to be seen whether the sharks of Malapascua will still be found here in years to come, or if they'll be pushed to the point of no return, to become ghosts of the Big Blue. Just south of the Philippines, and not far from the coast of Borneo, lies the Malaysian island of Sipadan. The island rises 600 meters from the seabed and is formed from an extinct volcano topped by a thick crust of coral. On neighboring Mabul, life revolves around the sea. The communities here have long survived by fishing in the local waters. For fledgling fishermen, the morning's efforts have brought in a bumper catch. The sea has always sustained the people of Malaysia, and for their children, learning to swim is as natural as learning to walk. These water babies certainly seem to be just as at home below the waves as above. Mabul is also a base for divers looking to make the 15-kilometer hop to Sipadan. The entire island is now a national park, and the number of human visitors is restricted. For those who make it this far, it promises a truly unique diving adventure. But the inviting resorts and wide sandy beaches give no hint of the dark secret that lies hidden beneath the island. Just offshore, the beaches give way to rich coral gardens. Sipadan is known as the turtle capital of the world. Green turtles often visit the island and mate here all year round.
divers may encounter dozens of them in a single trip. The steep walls of the island are lined with corals that jut out into strong currents that sweep over the contours of the island. In places, the steep plunge into the abyss occurs just a few meters from the beach. Sea fans are a variety of coral that specialize in such conditions. They align their sieve-like structures at right angles to the prevailing current to maximize the amount of water they can filter. More than 3,000 species of fish can be found close to the island. Many make their home within the arms of the corals, while others float in clouds above the reef. Batfish are known to be a particularly gentle and social species and often form shoals with other types of fish. But not all of Sipadan's residents are quite so placid. Huge schools of predatory barracuda are also found here, in vast tornado-shaped shoals. Like most fish, the barracuda use a line of specialized cells that runs the length of their body to detect vibrations and movement within the water. This lateral line allows each fish to detect the precise movements of its neighbors. Any change of direction runs like a pressure wave through the shoal. And the barracuda move as if they were a single organism. elegant schools are a mesmerizing sight for divers. But Sipadan's waters hold another secret that is reserved only for the most adventurous underwater explorers who uncover it at their peril. Below the colorful reefs of Sipadan Island lies a dark secret. A mysterious cave that leads far into the limestone body of the island. Many who've been enticed into it have not returned. For this is not so much a cave as a labyrinth.
200 meters from the cave mouth, amid the twisting tunnels and countless dead ends, its terrible secret is laid bare. A chamber littered with the remains of turtles who sought it as a place of sanctuary, but couldn't find their way out. leftovers in an ogre's lair, piles of bones and skulls have been picked clean. The cave is known as the Turtle Tomb, but it's not only turtles that have perished here. This skeleton belonged to a marlin, although what one of the fastest fish in the open ocean was doing in the confines of the cave remains a mystery. Perhaps it was curiosity that proved the downfall of this dolphin, which must have realized its mistake tragically too late to reach safety. The tomb has claimed many lives, but most turtles that use the caves to sleep in do escape its clutches. Their story does not end here, and they're free to continue their mysterious ocean lives that may last for 80 years or more. largest island chain, Indonesia, also lies within Asia's immense borders. More than 17,000 islands, strung across 5,000 kilometers of ocean. Sulawesi is one of the largest islands, which has attracted a melting pot of people to its shores. The rainforests that obscure the volcanic peaks retain an air of mystery that is enhanced by regular discoveries of species new to science within their depths. But these jungles are far from the final frontier in this corner of Indonesia. Not far from Sulawesi, the waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans meet. The seas here are renowned for their diverse underwater life and appear to be a testing ground for some of Mother Nature's most incredible blueprints. Every dive here is a chance to discover creatures new to science. Families of black and white percular clownfish seem to have outgrown their anemone hosts. While they make use of the small pockets of protection offered by the anemones, many creatures that live in these volcanic sands and shales find that camouflage is the best form of defense. The Moses soul matches its surroundings so precisely that it may as well be invisible. Others keep an eye on life from the safety of a burrow. The mimic octopus is versatile enough to improvise no matter what the surroundings. It can imitate other creatures, including sea snakes, to ward off potential predators. It 
seems that all forms of life here try hard to look like someone or something else. Hairy spider crabs might pass for a tuft of seaweed, while the carry crab leaves no room for interpretation by wearing the protective spines of a sea urchin on its back. A porcelain crab filters the seawater using a special sieve-like appendage. At just three centimeters in diameter, it's easily concealed by the anemone in which it lives. The spiny leaf fish uses its fins to rock gently back and forth in the current. The need for such extreme disguises can only mean one thing. Predators. Many are armed with mouths large enough to take advantage of any opportunity that passes their way. While others are even more wily hunters. Hairy frogfish are unlikely looking contenders for the title of deadly predator. But these members of the anglerfish family use a fishing rod and fleshy lure to draw their prey within range. The frogfish possesses one of the fastest strikes in the animal kingdom and engulfs its target by expanding the volume of its mouth by 12 times in less than six thousandths of a second. For its victims, there are few second chances. Flexible bones allow the frogfish to swallow prey up to twice their own size. And even when the lure is not deployed, their excellent impersonation of a tuft of seaweed or a sponge is often more than enough. Of all Indonesia's masters of illusion, perhaps none is so alien looking as the flamboyant cuttlefish. Its pulsating flashes of color warn predators that its flesh is highly toxic. It may only reach around eight centimeters in length, but it's thought to contain poisons strong enough to kill a human. When hunting, they abandon the visual pyrotechnics and adopt a lower profile. Using its tentacles like a snooker cue, the cuttlefish works out the perfect angle for attack. In such a violent world, everyone must keep a constant watch for potential danger. Pufferfish can inflate like a football when threatened, while scorpionfish protect themselves with venomous spines on their back and fins. Resembling algae-covered rocks, they wait patiently to ambush their prey. The dragon-like features of a lionfish are the last thing that many small creatures will ever see. The 
this fearsome predator comes in several designs. All have elaborate fins, armed with venomous spines for defense. They are the nemesis of small reef fish and use their fins to corral their prey into a corner before swallowing it whole. The boxfish looks more like a cartoon caricature than a fish. The heavy bony plates that form its square-shaped body make it a less than elegant swimmer. But the toxins it can exude from its skin make predators think twice. The blue ring octopus is another master of chemical warfare. They may only reach a few centimeters in size, but the warning flashes of their blue rings should be taken seriously. Their saliva contains enough paralyzing venom to kill potential predators, including humans, in minutes. Nudibranchs resemble dollops of bright paint, but in fact are soft-bodied sea slugs that survive without a shell for protection by reusing the defense mechanisms of the organisms they eat. Their diet includes many colorful creatures armed with toxic stings, such as anemones, sponges, and corals. The nudibranchs use the colorful pigments of their prey to produce their own colors, which can serve as camouflage or unmistakable warnings. The toxins are also stored, which in turn makes them poisonous to others. And predators know to steer clear. Slithering slowly over the reef, they devour anything edible within their path, leaving only a slimy trail in their wake. The arms race between predators and their prey is the driving force behind many of the intricate designs and innovations in this workshop of evolution. A successful design must do one thing above all others, allow its owner to survive long enough to reproduce. But there are so many solutions to this universal problem that some scientists believe that 90% of the ocean species may not yet have been discovered. The shrimp family alone contains thousands of species, each a variation on a theme that's suited to life in one very specific part of the ocean. Blue-spotted cleaner shrimps live on the surface of anemones. They use their delicate appendages to gather tiny particles of food. The sexy shrimp's name is inspired by the dance-like shaking of its abdomen. Their much larger cousin, the peacock mantis shrimp, makes its home within burrows in the reef. It has the most advanced eyesight in the animal kingdom and the psychedelic colors of its shell may be used to communicate with other members of its species in a language of color that's invisible to others. Banded cleaner shrimps specialize in picking parasites from larger fish, a service that provides them with food
But in this world of color and never-ending invention, one species has perfected the art of illusion perhaps more than any other. Not all of the knobbly branches of this sea fan belong to itself. For this is the home of a creature that has camouflaged itself so effectively that it was overlooked by divers for decades. The pygmy seahorse. Standing just two and a half centimeters tall, they only live within a handful of coral species, which they imitate perfectly. So precise is the deception, even the scientists who study them have great difficulty in finding them, and it's thought that many more species remain to be stumbled upon. Of the countless designs that are used to solve the conundrum of how to survive in this colossal liquid universe, some of the best turn out to be the most simple.